find that all the main points are confirmed <coughs> from several different directions. Now these were things written and can be shown to be written at different times. Now did one copy the other? Well, no, not if the revelation goes on. Um, so in that sense you have to say, well, uh, yes, there will obviously be translate difficulties in translating it into one language from another because no two words in each language may be exact. Uh, some words in Greek may have a slightly different or additional meaning to the original Hebrew word. So it is a question of faith. You can't really actually uh, uh, answer that question uh, except possibly also to say that, well, the test of prophecy is whether it comes true. The test of the scriptures is, are they coming true? And the answer is yes. Okay, you've been waving. Thank you. <coughs> I've got a couple of quick questions. The first one is, um, if death is a result of sins, um, and Jesus has atoned for our sins, why do still people die? And also, there's millions of stillborn children, children that die in their infancy. What sin have they committed? Question first. Um, I thought actually uh, I'd, I'd answered that, but I will tell you what I think I said or should have said. <coughs> Basically speaking, uh, the sinner is not uh, excused the punishment for his sin, so he dies. But the mercy part comes in the resurrection. Am I? Are you? Is that right? Um, as to the sort of those who die as stillborn children or children who die in infancy, uh, what sin have they committed? They carry actually human flesh. They are mortal. Now, have they committed a sin? Well, they're too young to understand and be responsible. No, but if they die through illness or accident, they are mortal. They cannot be immortal. They're not born immortal. Now you say, well, does God um, permit accidents and illnesses? Well, yes, he does. It's part of what's in the world is our test. And it's actually quite a test to some people's faith when a child dies very young. But he dies, or the child dies, because of its own mortality. It can't be born with any better nature than its parents, and its parents are mortal. Any questions for Mr. Green? Yes. <laughs> yeah. I have a Green. Yeah. I have a couple of questions for Mr. Green. Uh, you started with Allah yahdi man yasha wa yadul man yasha. Yadul is one of God's names. It means the, he who, I don't know how to exactly translate it in English, but set people straight out the right way. So if it was one of God's names, and he, Yehdi Manisha, and Yudul Manisha, what is the job of the devil? And the second question, in uh, Surah al Nisa, Ayah 91, it said, Jesus is the word of God. Messiah ibn Maryam, Kalimat Allah, wa Ruhan Med. You said, God is not so. But clearly, in the Quran it says, Ruhan Med, soul from God. So, if God is not a soul, <coughs> where does Jesus' soul come from, according to the Quran? And third question, and the Quran says, uh, Maryam bint Amran, Maryam the son of Amran, is actually the sister of Harun, who was with Moses, when clearly they are more than 3,000 years apart between Harun and Maryam, uh, Virgin Maryam, the mother of Jesus. Did you get what I got? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, I didn't really get the first question, actually. Should I repeat it? No, I didn't really understand what you, the point you were trying to make, though. I said, 
And the Quran said, Yahdi man yasha, wa yudhul man yasha. Yudhul means set people straight. Yeah. Allah guides who he wants to guide, and he leaves the misguide, guides who he wants to guide. Yes. So, if he misguides people, yeah. what does the devil do? Yes. Um, what it means here is very simple. Uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides. How does Allah guide? How does Allah guide us? According to what you've already heard from me today, how does Allah guide people? By sending a messenger. Yeah? Yes? So He sends a messenger. You have intellect, you have your fitra, and Allah sends a messenger, so make your choice. So Allah guides you by sending you a messenger. You use your brain, you understand from your nature, you will be guided. Similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is Iblis. Okay, Shaitan. He is trying to misguide you from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah? So this is the way that it works. Yeah? The Quran also says that Allah guides those who want to be guided. It is not some random thing. Allah guides this one and misguides that one. No, if you want guidance, Allah will guide you. If you don't want the guidance, Allah is not going to force you to believe. It's your choice. This is the choice that we make. Yeah? So that's the explanation of that. The second question was and Surah al yeah, uh, Surah woman, al-Nisa woman ayah yes okay about the ruh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yeah it is very well known in any language mm -hmm. and Arabic is no different okay uh, that for example if I said to you Allah's house does that mean that this is the house where Allah lives we say Baytullah it is the house of Allah does that mean I walk in there and there's Allah is living in there or Allah's the Quran refers to the camel that was sent as a miracle to Ad, Allah refers to it as Allah's camel. Does this mean that Allah sat on his camel and rode around on the desert on his camel? No. Meaning, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that this is, belongs to him and it is a created thing, it is that Allah, he is signifying that this is special. Everything belongs to Allah. The one we say, Bait Allah, this is a special place that belongs to God. Or this is something special that belongs to God. So this ruh that belongs to Allah is it is a, it is a soul which is a created thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to Isa. But Allah He honored it by saying his soul. Does not mean it's Allah, a bit of Allah's soul came into Isa. No. It is a soul that belongs to Allah. Everything belongs to Allah, but Allah honored it in this respect through this use of this is how the language is used to honor something like that. So this is what it means. Does not mean that Isa has a soul of Allah. As for the third thing, it's very interesting. The Prophet Muhammad was asked exactly this question. Exactly. This question that you asked about that you are the, the daughter of Harun. He said, the Prophet said, this is a term through which the Jews used to refer to each other. So they used to say, yeah, oh, daughter of this, oh, such and such of that. Since Harun was a pious person, in the same way, just exactly as I explained, Abu Huraira, as the Arabs use it, father of the kitten. It is a term of type of honor or connecting someone with someone honorable that they used to use uh, in the language. Yeah? So that was, this is what that means that you referred to uh, in that respect. Can I have a question for both of you? Yeah. Uh, if a person, um, the question would be, is it fair? You've got a person, he commits so much, so much crime on the earth, stealing, killing, everything, and he can get away with it. He's very clever. He can get away with anything. No judgment, whatever. He never been to jail. But before he died, he believed in Jesus Christ's plan. That Jesus was died for him. And get away with it. Do you think this is a fair or it's not fair? Would be forgiven just because he believed in the dead? He believed in, in Jesus Christ, and he would be punished for the crime which he commit, and he get away with it on him. So for both of you, can you find out for me? There you go. Your eyes will be personal. Is it fair? My goodness me. Um, I will say. Yes. And the reason I'll say yes is that